Bachani could tell it to kick out, like a court on the sale, on the sale, machine. Cut down, make a dam, 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 make Good afternoon to you. It is a Monday. I think today is Monday. Yeah? Today should be a Monday. It's a good day. I'm happy that you're here. My name is Shishi. For those who don't know me, my name is also known as Shishi Wanj. I am a multidisciplinary artist, a DJ by profession, a writer, and so much more. Um, today I was asked to talk about um, my career uh, being a female DJ in the industry in Nairobi, uh, Kenya, Nairobi. And yeah, also on that note, Sondeka Festival is happening this year. So look out for that. Um, before I get into the nitty gritties, I feel like I should first introduce um, myself. Obviously, I've done that, but like what I do, um, I am a DJ. I've been a DJ for about let's see, about five to six years which is crazy because time has really flown, time has really passed. I can't believe <laughs> that it's already like my sixth year being a DJ. Um, but it's led me to this point right now and I'm happy about that. So yeah, um, how did I get into DJing? I think it was about 2016. Um, okay, actually let me take it all the way back. When I was in high school, like most of us used to play around with like different software. Yeah? For me, I used to play around with virtual DJ, just like for fun, you know, when you're at parties or like hanging out with your friends. And then fast forward to uni days, um, I started making, I curate playlists a lot. That's like how I started. I'm a playlist a kind of DJ and we'll get into that, into different kinds of DJs and how they, do, how they create their sets because they're very different. Um, but what I, I started with uh, playlisting and then I started making mixes just like for myself and for my friends and they really enjoyed that. So um, there was a suggestion that I should be making now mixes like now for the public. So I started out by first making mixes for people and for others and releasing them before I started playing live in front of an audience. Yeah. So that was my start. Um, and I'm happy I did it that way because it gave me an idea of what kind of music people like and that they actually like me. And it was proof also like to promote us that if you wanted to hire me, I actually have a crowd and people that who will listen to me. So that's how I started off. So from there, um, I was basically hired for my first gig. And I did my first two major gigs at Alchemist. Um, which was a blessing because Alchemist is such a dope place. And I started, I started when Alchemist was starting also, like in a sense. I think maybe Alchemist was about maybe a year old when I did my first gigs there. And my first gig was uh, two, but I'd say the first main one was at uh, a gig called Youth Knows No Limits. Actually, it was called Muchuzi Mix, but it was hosted by Youth Knows No Limits and it was a fantastic set. And it's ever since I started, like it's always been uphill from there, so I'm very grateful. Um, that was around, I think, 2017. So I started making my mixes in 2016, and then I started doing now live gigs in 2017, yeah. So I was talking about like how, actually let's get to the why. Why I started DJing. Um, easy for me, it's because, um, I realized that the music that I was listening to was not being played in clubs or wasn't being played like at parties and shows and stuff like that. Um, and me and my friends were really craving like those type of vibes, you know, like, you know, when you're at a house party, you get to control the kind of music that you're listening to. But if you're in a club or if you're out at a concert or a show, you're, you have to listen to 
like what the general audience wants to listen to. So um, I'm very niche myself. I'm very niche in the work that I do, um, which will get me to the point of the different kinds of DJs. So there's club DJs, there's um, event DJs, there's um, concert and show DJs, and <coughs> there's like the residential type of DJs. For me personally, I am a concert show uh, festival kind of DJ that's just what I prefer because also based on my kind of music um, I uh, it requires like crate digging crate digging is when you're searching for music the term comes from back in the day when they used to sell records and vinyls you had to like go through um, vinyls and crates and crates and find like that record that you really want um, these days obviously we don't listen to vinyls that much if, if at all if you have a record shout out to you a record player beautiful um, but these days crate digging we still use the term because it's just very authentic and raw but um, with the type of music that I play which is niche alternative everything alternative r&b alternative hip-hop alternative electronic alternative nairobi kenya actually w the main motivator for me to start djing was that nairobi artists weren't being played as much as they should have been and actually with this set you'll hear me playing a lot of um kenyan music so as i get into the next segment of what i talk about how different djs why there are different kinds of DJs and how they create their sets and how I came about to be. Let me just play you a Kenyan track, yeah? So this is Sikunjama by Just Wax. I woke up blessed. I woke up. I woke up blessed. I woke up. Sell, I woke up blessed. My hands on the thighs and the breasts. Nikuna watutu wa wili sababu wa tatu wa nina ni stress. Without a play like chess. I put my queen to work. I'm riding around with the body. She's telling me, Yaki, let's go on a quest. Hey, I'm feeling like an only boy, it's Sikun 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 Hey, hey, Bewa Hewa. I had to with smoke. Watch a vela. Whether we boil him to beat him or Vuvuzela. No bigger so healing, no bigger kizuku tena. Siku njema kweli unekana my baby. If I bless the booty more, I'm more than it's a bender. Don't put my secret ellipse into your blender. If I hop on the track, it's a hit, not a fender bender. Please keep it brief like the thing that I had with Brenda. I'm on a wave in a kayak, no me jikenda. Shout it to know that my puller game is on Jenga. <laughs> How was he expect to keep break up with Taku Jenga? Even when back to the day we first met, nge kulenga If they ask to bend us, me no bender, ayy Put the nyash on my agenda, ayy Where she shakes, no more canna, ayy Got me plotting like a tenant Yo, he could run away the tema Baby, it's all a cause, it's safer I hate to do the macarena She's a keeper, paper rainer I woke up blessed My hands on the thighs and the breasts Nikona wa tutu wa wili, sababu wa tatu wa nina ni stress Without a play like chess I can't help but think about you all the time Reminiscing on the time where you were mine Caught up in these memories of when it just you and me Wondering if you still feel my touch on your skin Feel me kiss you on your forehead All the way down to your chin My hand again, it a Dance again, where right when I'm here Let your cards down, let me catch you this time Promise I won't hurt you again Wish that we could stay here, why can't we just stay here? Love around my neck like a chain Oh, Sinia Chain Oh, Sinia Chain Wish that we could stay here, why can't we just stay here? Let me show you my love's the same No, I would regret if I don't try 
So that's a newly released song actually. Um it came out last week uh by someone called Miss Katana and DJ John Vincent. Um that's my current obsession from like Nairobi music and that will get me into if you want to be a DJ you have to discover where your passion lies, what kind of music you're into because you will be required to show up there's this quote that i like that usually says um the higher the the higher the level you achieve the more you expected to to be so every time you so every time you do a show um you'll always have to do better than your last show at least for me that would be my advice because why would you want your show to be less than what you've done before so for me my passion comes from um showing or showcasing music that people don't listen to or unheard of so like the underdogs whatever around the world that is from um obviously nairobi like new nairobi that's that's my shit can i cuss <laughs> the new nairobi you know that's my shit so um i play for me it comes like from the outreach of like i have this platform and if you you have to believe that you have good taste in music if you if you fear that people will not like your music the audience can always smell the fear and you you, you have to be able to read your audience and i personally used to make that mistake because i'd be the first time i used to dj i used to do it like i'm in my room or like just with my friends and like not really concentrating because concentrating on the audience because i knew okay these people obviously like this music because we're together in this so it took me at least i think my first two or three shows for me to realize okay i have to read the audience and that's so key it's so important because you can organize a set list and a playlist or a vibe for your set but then you see people in the audience are not vibing with it what are you going to do which gets me to the point of you need to have backups on backups and backs up backups of music um i learned that the hard way because i did a show whereby everyone really enjoyed my set and they asked me to play for an extra hour but i didn't have music for an extra hour so i had to like go and scavenge and like go home get my laptop and then get my music and it was just a whole like debacle and to avoid that that lesson told me that you should always have backup music um at your show like regardless yeah so that's going to take me to like your style your style of music um are you a hip hop head are you a rock head are you an r&b head are you an alternative head like me are you um jazz are you electronic you have to find your niche and your niche will help you find your audience and your gigs and the type of people that you type of shows that you want type of people that you want to play for and the type of shows you want to perform at so i would highly encourage that you go for events that you want to play at so that you can also read the audience and the type of people who go for those type of events that's going to teach you a lot before you ever go on stage because you'll have an idea of what you're supposed to do um what the people like um what they don't like as well what they wish was there what they think is missing and not only for that but also to network personally i always say i'm a master networker like I always book my gigs on my own. I've never had like an agent or anything like that. And even when I'm working with booking agents, I have more connections than they do, which is ironic because I guess like I said I'm a master networker. Not everyone I know some people like maybe you maybe you're socially awkward or you have social anxiety, but you have to find a way to network for yourself if you're really like passionate about it and this goes across like all boards whatever your profession is you know that you always have to network and you know like for me like the type of dj that i am i'm a party dj i'm a festival dj i genuinely enjoy going for those things so networking comes very easily to me because i meet the right people at the right time at the right place so always find a way to plant yourself in those situations so you can find people to talk to and people who like help expand your show And on that note the reason I said earlier that your 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 next show or your current show should always be better than your last 
um, the reason I say that is because every time I did a show, it was better than the last, and that's how I got booked. I got booked, actually, I did not expect even personally for my career to pop off as fast as it did. But then, based on the advice I was given by, like, by my peers and my mentors and the people who taught me how to DJ and stuff like that, and working in the entertainment business, is that... <coughs> When I do, I, I did a show, yeah, my first show, it was phenomenal, it was fantastic, everyone danced. I got booked that day. So when I did the next show, I was booked that day. I did the next show, I was booked that day. And there were people who will come, you have to realize that the people who will come for your shows, like, consecutively. So you can't have the same set all the time, because people will notice. And also, like I said, you have to have passion, you have to have, like, music. I eat, breathe, eat, live. I just mu ooze music. I wake up with music. I do everything with music. And that's, it just kind of has to be a passion for you. But you always have to keep collecting music because you never know when you'll be booked for a gig. Like, I can be booked for a gig, like, two days from now, and I can't be like, oh, no, I'm not prepared. And, like, you play the same set that you played the last time, you know? Unless you're doing, like, a tour. You know, they, people do tours, and they have, like, a specific set and you know you're doing that in different towns and different cities so that's different but if you're doing it in the same small town with the same crew of people or maybe just a few who've come to see you you have to collect so much music whereby oh, for a for you to have a variety b for people to have different ideas of you because um unless you're very like specific to like the kind of music that you play like if you're strictly hip-hop that's fine, but you see, there's also ki there's different kinds of hip hop. There's the boom paps, there's the rap hip hop, there's the '90s hip hop, there's the new age hip hop. You know, there's the conscious hip hop, there's the fun twerking hip hop. You know, so there's also like a need to have to show. I'd say use the opportunities to show the different sides of you. Definitely, uh, for me personally, I have my live shows and my mixes that I put online, I like two different personalities. And when people ask me to describe the kind of music that I play, I always find it so hard. I always say maybe feel good music or mood music because I believe there's a music for every mood. So uh, for example, my live shows, I tend not to record them only for myself, maybe just to listen to how the set went. But it's like, for me, it's like, if you are there, you are there, you enjoyed. And also, the audience, I really feed off. You have to learn how to feed off the energy of the audience. You read them and there's, there's, there's a thrill that the audience gives you when, when you listen to them or you play songs that you know that they, they're gonna enjoy. And then as opposed to mixing like maybe in a studio or in your bedroom or in the house or whatever, that's different because for me, I put it like different like moods. Like I'm not gonna put like a heartbreak, I'm not gonna play a live set at a show about heartbreak music, but I will upload one because someone out there is maybe going through some kind of heartbreak and they wanna listen to it. Or like driving around jams. I like those jams where like if you're washing your hair, cleaning the house, driving around the city, uh, you've gone for a road trip, those kind of things, those are the two alter egos. So I feel like mood mixes on my mix cloud are more of personal and like calm and like chill and then on the live sets that's electric you just have to be there um so there's a way that you have to find your different niches and you can have more than one um which also brings me to style um i was so i was i learned djing in two different ways if you want to do it like me well and good if you don't, that's also okay. Um, I learned the theory first before I learned the technical stuff. Um, and I have, I'm, my, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by artists and DJs alike, so they were able to teach me the things that I needed. So like how to counter beats, how to counter, uh, how to, like the pitch, how to know this is 120 BPM, how to know this is 80 BPM, those type of things. And also on that note, you find, as you go along, you'll find that DJs usually have a tempo. Um, not at the last make moja, but there's a way you just know like there's this certain vibe that you'll get from a DJ. Mine, it's a big range, <laughs> uh, but, like, but mine comes from 100 to 120. But my favorite, I think, is maybe one. 110 around there whereby it's like you know that caterer vibe whereby if you're eating you can eat and chill if you want to dance you can dance you know that kind of vibe 
but also of course it goes really higher like into the 130s and the 70 and 130s and all that kind of stuff so different DJs have different styles so when I learned the theory I was like okay cool now I can learn the technical and learning the technical especially as a female is so important because let me not lie to you being a female in any industry, you know that you're looked down upon. You know, it's a man's world, so they say, but that's changing, yeah? So, um, learning the technical stuff is so important because, unfortunately, there's this aspect of being looked down on, on or oh, she doesn't know what she's doing, she doesn't know the technical, especially when you're new, because when you're new, even as a guy, you don't really know all the stuff, but the, the aspect of being a, a girl or a woman will always have that extra grain of salt of like, ah, look at her, you can fanya. So I really insist that you learn all the technical stuff. Know like the, um, I don't even know if you can see this, but like, you know, you know, know that this is a drug wheel, know that this is how you change the tempo, how, how to cue, how to auto loop, know the equalizers, know how to use different decks. You know, there's DDJs and there's, I mean, controllers, and then there's CDJs. I learned with CDJs first, and learning with CDJs m makes controllers so much easier. Um, you can, there's different types of controllers, obviously, different types of CDJs. Then there's also vinyls. Um, I'm yet to learn how to use vinyls, but I think that's like the purest form. You can also DJ with, obviously, a flash disc, a hard drive, uh, cassette, uh, cassette tapes, and CDs. Um, there are people who still DJ like that. It, I think like it's such a skill. Personally, I don't think I would be able to handle uh, CDs to be specific. I think I would rather play tapes and records because CDs are so sensitive, guys. Like CDs are so sensitive. But yeah, learn like even the things at the back. What is an RCA? What is an output? What is an input? Where does the mic go if you need to use a microphone? Um, especially if. Um, let me give you a little story, and this usually tends to happen to a lot of DJs, whereby you do a gig, and then there's performing artists, and they don't have a band, yeah? Because it's not always a must, you know, they're not like the main act. Even though there is a main act, most people do like Half-Life, so you do like the band and the DJ for the backing tracks. So what you find is that you'll end up doing backing tracks for like the whole lineup without wanting to because it wasn't organized properly or like it was a, it was something people overlooked so because of that you also have to learn the technical stuff because how you play a set and how you play backing tracks for artists is very different and different artists have different requirements so if you're going if you find yourself in that situation just d by chance you see having the knowledge of oh, okay this is where the microphone goes this is how to handle the levels this is the mids these are the highs this is how you trim it this is how the artist wants it do they want reverb do they know what reverb and also obviously there's the sound engineers to help you out with that so i'd also highly recommend being friends with the sound guys um, sound guys and DJs, you have to be friends, even with lighting, especially if you get a venue um, that has lighting that can be specific to you. My personal favorite is Muse because the lighting crew at Muse, the sound and lighting crew at Muse asks you what colors that you want for your performance. Um, does What color do you go with the kind, kind of music that you want? And I'm also a very visual person, so that definitely does help. And um, yeah, so as a female, definitely learn the technical stuff. I went to a school in town whereby I was being taught my, by my DJ friend. He's called Soul. Shout out Soul, amazing DJ. Um, the thing is, though, is that he's a house DJ and I am not a house DJ. I can't play house music, but he strictly plays house music, yeah? Like his residence is a house music. So he taught me how to play in the house way. And different genres of music obviously have different ways to play the music. Because for some, it's the, um, what is it called? The drop is the most important part of the song. Um, for some, it's the chorus. For some, it's the bridge. For some, it's the vocals, you know? So as much as I learned the theory from one DJ friend and then the other DJ friend ta taught me the technical side and it was very interesting for me to learn using the house side. Um, if you want someone to teach you or if you're self-teaching, um, I'd say be very keen on the type of music that they play. 
Do I wish I, I was taught by someone who plays my same genre of music? Not necessarily, because it taught me that everyone has different styles and that I had to own it. Um, not only as a DJ, but also as a female DJ, because personally, I feel like um, women obviously bring a different energy to the stage. And a lot of people say that. And um, if you're starting out as a female DJ, you will notice that there's just a different energy that women bring to the atmosphere, to the from the selection that they play, how they play, just in the same way men do. Men also have their own energy that we enjoy. So if you're going to be a female DJ, you'll also notice those type of things. Um, what was I saying? Yes. Do I uh, wish that I was taught or that I learned with someone who plays music in the same way? I mean, the same type of music that I play? No, because how he taught me was, you know how she's in that very BPM way? Um, beat matching is like so key. Obviously, obviously, beat matching is key to everything. What no, no matter what kind of DJ that you are, but you can DJ in different ways. So, like with house, it's very much beat matching. For me, I use beat matching and pitch. Actually, I mostly use pitch because you know the way like some songs have the same vibe but totally different tempo. You can always play with the pitch, and then there's also sound effects. There's people who use attack the attack method is actually let me just show you what an attack method is right now um what were we playing we were playing katana yeah so i'm going to show you how what an attack method is it's one of the easiest but it should not be done often so yeah Okay, that was a bit of a soft attack, but an attack is meant to be more of a kick. Um, uh, my selection today is a bit smooth, but there's, um, there's a bunch of uh, mixed stuff. So I'll attack with the next song, but just let's listen to this one, which also was released last week. It's by Karun. It's called I Know, which is just to the fans. So, yeah. <laughs> we call the attack method it's one of the easiest should not be done often but it's one of the easiest ways to transition especially if the vibe is totally different so yeah. 
faster faster ikusi ni duka soko rasta pasta kosi kilaita Chach, wamegeuza dunda ni kushinda na sword na nimetoka runda kila kitu fake yani kila kitu china wengi watakupima life ni noma kijana ukapimwe ya kila kitu fake yani kila kitu china wengi watakupima life ni noma kijana ukapimwe What I've done right now is, like I said, if you find yourself in a situation where you have performing artists or an MC also, an MC needs to speak and an MC can't speak in silence. So usually what most DJs do is that they leave the, the music on loop. So you have to time that loop properly whereby it makes sense, whether it's the bridge, the chorus, or a line, some people will know whereby it flows and then you count that in beats. So there's two, four, eight, uh, 16 continue continue like that um, which brings me to your goal so obviously there's different types of DJs and different DJs have different goals if you're um, club DJ obviously your goal is for people to dance or to get drunk I don't know up to you if you're a wedding DJ there's a lot more that goes into it you have to no, when people are speaking, you know, you have to uh, accommodate the toys, the young adults, the adults, adults, and like the old people as well. Um, what is your goal for them? They have to feel like unanimous. If it's like a kid's birthday party, those, you know, those ones first do musical chairs and all that kind of shit, yeah? Um, if you're, let's see, uh, a lounge DJ. So when you start doing gigs, you'll realize that the show flow, always, always, always ask for the show flow. Because promoters are thinking about other things. They're not thinking about you. They think about you when it's your time to play. So for wewe ujinawo, ujijue, always ask for the show flow, always ask for your set time, always know how long you're playing, you know, all that kind of stuff. Always do contracts, whether you're starting out or whatever, so that people can also see that you're a professional yeah so in a show flow you'll see depending on the type of gig there's day gigs and there's night gigs so what where is where, where is your set time is it during the day is it at sunset is it at night is it early in the morning obviously you uh, do your set in accordance with that and also like i said have a backup because some things show things don't always work out as they should. You'll see that your set time has been pushed two hours. And that can make a huge difference. Because if you're playing at 4 p.m. and then you're playing at 7, those are two totally different vibes. 4 p.m. guys are still like, you know, in the sun, drinking their cocktails or whatever. And they're having a good time. Guys are still a bit shy shy. 7, usiku yeah. The dance demons have come out. People want to have fun and like let loose. So it's always good to have those backups. So for like the first year of my career, I was an opener because two reasons. I know how to open a dance floor. Know your strengths. What are your strengths? Um, is it opening a dance floor? Is it knowing how to make people dance? Are you a good opening act for the main act? Like what's, what's your, your strength? Is your strength, there's also those people who are so good at playing like the 2 a.m sets when guys are high out of their minds and they know how to control 
those people. Music is a very spiritual and powerful thing. So you also have to be careful of how you deal with people, yeah? If you're a female, you know this. You know, we're connected. So um, if you're doing an opening set, play an opening set. Play the type of set whereby you're introducing people to the venue, whether it's a branch, whether it's um, a concert, whatever it is. And it might be disheartening if your opening set is really early and there are no people at your venue. But it would be nice if you go with, like, you know, you're always given a plus one, a plus two. Uh, go with your entourage. Or, but also don't feel bad because, like I said, in the first year of my career, I always used to do opening sets. And for me, it was like a warm up. Because more often than not, I would, like, really kill my opening set. I'd be asked to play again. Hence, again, the need for backups. <laughs> you have to believe that you're that good. So if you're doing an opening set, do it in a way that in people are walking in and they're like, wow, this place is so nice, it's amazing. Who is the DJ? When can I see them again? And the opening is when people actually pay a lot more attention than they do, let, let's say, like at the peak. Because at the peak, people are dancing with their friends. I mean, obviously, people will be like, oh, who is that playing? Like, who is that? They're doing an amazing job. But if you're doing an opening set, do an opening set. If you're next to the main act, play accordingly. Never, ever, 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 never, ever play an artist song before they go on stage. It is unprofessional. They don't like it unless you have been asked to. Because the, you, you kill the wow factor that the artist is trying to give their audience. Never, ever, ever play an artist's song before they go on stage, ever. So if you're doing that, what kind of music does the next person who's going after you, what do they play? There could be a DJ who plays totally different music. It could be of higher, depending on now how the program is curated, you know, not everyone knows how to curate a good event. But if you do a nice, a properly curated event, mostly it goes like slow, up, 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 and then, you know, you kill it. You don't kill it all the way down, but that's usually the curve. So where on the curve are you? Know that so that you can do your part in curating this beautiful event and giving people a good time. Obviously, if you're the peak DJ, you have to kill it. People have come here to see you. If you have fans, you've established your fan base, you've established your niche, you have to come through for your people, whether you're doing a one hour, two hour, three hour set, even if it's half an hour. It really doesn't matter because like I said, music is a very powerful thing and it can really shift people's energy and it, a set really is very memorable. So you have to be careful on how you deal with that. If you're a closing set also, um, me personally, sipendangi set ziki shati ivo tu. Yani guys are jamming, guys are jamming, which sucks because these days, um, sorry, excuse me, curfew unfortunately has given us those limitations so sets do have to end abruptly but i do think that there's a better way to do it and i also really appreciate i appreciate all kinds of djs the openers the in-betweens and the ones who close how you close your set is also going to be so memorable because people people will remember that's the last thing i remember from that event from that concert from that night out from that brunch you know so if you want to make yourself memorable, and I'm assuming that you do, and if your goal is to give people a good time, do you want people to relax? Do you want people to dance? Do you want people to go home and feel nice and be like, man, that was such a good concert, that was such a good event, that was such a nice birthday, you know? The closing set is very important. So, me, my personal advice to you is that usikate two set, yani, it's peak, and then like you're playing like the most like exhilarating jam, and then you cut it and then you tell guys to go home. Especially if you don't have an MC who knows what they're doing. Aita work. So don't feel bad if you have a closing set because that's also, that's like some holy grail shit right there because you'll be very memorable with what you do. Um, so yeah, you should have your own main personal goal and your goal like in the long run. Do you want your personal goals um, how do you want to make people feel? What do you, how do you want people to act? And then there's the other goal of, that's on the bigger scale. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, 
and your own personal goals. How long do you want to be a DJ for? What do you want to be known for? What kind of events do you want to go for? Why do you want to go for those events? Why do you want to perform at those events? How will you get to those events? And how you play each set, when you have those goals set in your mind, then you play your sets appropriately. If you just want to be a DJ for fun, at, oh, I've just finished uni, I've just finished high school, let me try this hobby, then I mean, do it well and good. If your long-term goal is to have it as a career like myself, um, you have to set those goals in mind and always see how you can always get to the next step. So uh, before I talk about the next topic, because we're actually almost done, um, let me continue playing this song for you guys. As you can tell, it's still on loop. So yeah. <laughs> I haven't already been able to tell. My set today has been all Kenyan, all Nairobi, because that's gang. <laughs> so you see, for me personally, my passion is getting Kenyan music out there and also introducing people to music that they don't know from wherever around the world that is. I want people to party beyond their bedrooms, beyond their houses. So what's your passion? At the end, what is your goal? Is your goal to play the top 100s? Is your goal to give people nostalgic feels? Is your goal to introduce people to music that they've never heard of before? Is your goal to play your own music if you're also a producer? Uh, DJ producer is a very, very common thing. Uh, most DJs either enter events or they do uh, production or all of it. And you'll notice that the more you enter the game. <coughs> As a female, I will say, that because we are so rare, there's so much pressure for, oh, you should do this, you should do that, you should do this, you should do all these things. And I experienced a lot of that pressure as well. Um, and I understood why, but then at the same time, you have to really learn how to be grounded in yourself. Because let's be honest, the hype of female anything is always going to be there. 
but then don't let that overshadow your actual skills and talents because it very easily can they'd be like oh yeah she's the female dj who does this she's the female dj who does this and then you also maybe people will discredit you because they think you're only being hired for being a female dj prove them wrong show your skill set show your talent i love proving people wrong it's <laughs> i get high off that shit so if you ever feel like people are just giving you gigs i mean obviously i'm not gonna lie bank on it but also prove that you're good at what you do that you're actually bringing something to the table don't let your gender or your sex overshadow what you're actually trying to talk about what you're trying to showcase what you're trying to play how you're trying to make people feel so um that comes to my next point of pressure people will try to pressure you to be a producer to be um a certain kind of dj and as you enter the world of entertainment and djing Obviously, you'll have to like double and double the different kinds of events that you want to do before you find what your thing is. Sometimes you'll find you prefer playing at the club. Sometimes you, you see that you prefer concerts. Sometimes you see you prefer festivals. Sometimes you'll see that you prefer parties, you know. So as you double and double, and I, I would say take advantage of those opportunities when they come to you. So because the earlier and the sooner that you learn what your niche is, where you're more comfortable, where people pay you your worth, where there's a proper exchange of value, the better for you, the better for everyone else. And the more niche you become, the more comfortable and easy it is for you to get like gigs and for people to understand the kind of music that you play. That can also be tricky because if you know how music goes. There's always going to be that trend of or a wave of songs or a genre that's going to be like the way for a couple of months or even a year or so. And if it doesn't fit your niche, you can try and adjust. If it works, beautiful. If it doesn't, I don't think you should force yourself to fit into any box. I'll give an example. I'm a piano has been the wave since the pandemic, like uh, towards maybe mid to late last year to this year. I'm a piano has been like the vibe. It's same music, you know. Um, it's been beautiful, it's been wonderful, you know, it's some very good like jams, but now all the gigs are my piano, you know. And it's not like, um, I'm not saying I hate I'm a piano or I hate I'm a piano gigs, but you know the way Kenyans, no, no, the, no, the industry you're working in, whether you're in Nairobi, Kakamega, Eldoret, Kenya, Uganda, East Africa, Nigeria, you know, I can only speak for myself here from my hometown. Um, you know how Kenyans move? Kenyans move like sheep. If one club is popping, everyone is gonna go to that club. When it dies, everyone leaves. If this one is popping, another one, everyone will go to that one, and that's how we move. The same goes for uh, music, music lovers, <coughs> music, con music concert goers, yeah? Excuse me. So, you have to allow those waves and phases to come through go i mean obviously go for those gigs um understand why people enjoy going for those events um figure out um what is what is it that what gap is this feeling what gap can i also feel um personally for me i do play like afro house maybe not specifically i'm a piano but my niche is, you know, feel good music. I play electronic. I play alternative R&B. I play alternative hip hop. I play like I like bass. I like bass, like dirty bass music. That's my niche. So obviously, there's the, there's the instances whereby you'll have to adjust to maybe what is happening. But if you're not comfortable with doing it, I say don't do it. Your people will always be there. I know my audience will always be there. They're asking me for, for gigs, for mixes, you know, stuff like that. I'd say be very interactive with your crowd, whether you're on stage or off stage. On stage, obviously, like I said, read the crowd, feed off their energy, and have a way of, like, just, I don't know, communicating with them, whether it's through music or whatever. Um, do not come to the DJ booth if you don't know each other. Do not let people come to do with drinks. And you know, like people like coming around the performer just to be like, oh, cool, cool, cool. Like I know the DJ, the main act. Don't let people come to your gigs, especially if the equipment is not yours. 
because that can go very, very, very badly. Equipment is not cheap. Um, actually, even if the equipment is yours, you're not trying to let someone like mess up your whole shit. You know, you don't want people to fuck up your shit. So be very keen about that. And eventually, as you continue to uh, pursue this career, um, you'll end up buying your own equipment. You'll see what you're more comfortable with. Obviously, do your research. There's an array of different kinds of... Um, what are they called? Uh, equipment, whether it's uh, controllers or CDJs. Um, some people play with four decks, some with three. Some have like, everyone is so different. I would encourage for you to, <coughs> if you're a DJ, you obviously have favorite DJs that you listen to. So I'd encourage like watching them, watching how they do their thing, um, why they do it the way they do. And it's gonna take. I'm not gonna. Um, it's not gonna take a short time for you to figure out your shit. To be very honest, because also I feel like change is inevitable. So how you do your thing will always change. Maybe one time like effects is your shit. Then the next time it's the actual genre of music that you're playing. Then the next time um, you're using three controllers. I mean three jog wheels. The next time maybe you're doing like some video DJing. You know. Also be adaptable like don't be scared to be out there because you think people won't like your music because i don't believe that you, there's only one person who can like one genre of music or one style of doing things and there's always events you can even start doing your own events actually if you feel like people won't enjoy what you do but I would say being unique is very, very key if you want to last in this game, whether you're a female or a male. And obviously because as a female, you have to work twice as hard because there's always that underlying superiority complex, yeah? So anyway, I just want to finish this off soon. Um, thank you for coming. I hope you have learned. Um, have fun on stage. Um, love the music that you're playing. Um, happy International Women's Day. Um, I hope that, you know, being a female should not be the thing that people define you as in this industry, but let it be one of the things. It can be your guiding, your guiding light. Um, for me, I've had a beautiful time. I've been blessed enough to surround myself with people who understand what I bring to the table and encourage that. So always find those kind of people. Have fun, create dig, uh, take criticism, take positive criticism well. Um, network, network, network. Stay true to yourself. Um, put yourself out there because you have to. Th gigs just can't come to you. You have to put yourself out there. Always play your last show, your current show better than your last show. You never know who's in the crowd, who's in the audience. Could be your next person, your next uh, boss. Not boss, what is it called? your next um, promoter, your next booking, you know. And yeah, stay clear of your goals. Mm, find your niche um, and just never be discouraged. So um, this was Shishi. I'm just gonna close off with a mini set and I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Yeah, we have Valerie Madoni with a brand new spicy remix of We Took a Ground in Different. We Took a Ground in Different, sis. We live on that show, I like. Turn it on. I swear to God, I'm about to go dumb. Where's the competition? I see none. Eat my leftovers, it's when I am done. Life is a race, boy, you better run. Before the people bust the wonder guns. And you know they like shooting niggas for fun. You don't wanna fuck with me, I'm not the one. Much like a son, today you gon' learn that I don't give a fuck. Niggas begging for features, I wish you luck. In the city, it's sin, I'm like Andrew does. Bring my heart on my sleeve, but I'm dangerous. Yeah, the kid talk a shit, but she back it up, yeah. Y'all like a Chevy truck, yeah. Yeah, nigga, she back it up, yeah. Y'all like a Chevy truck, jeez. My time is too precious, too deep of a pressure to sit here and talk about now who is better. I'm hot like the weather, this flow like a feather. Me and the homies, we eat it together. Yeah, got the heart of a queen, the mind of a hustler, she's got hit master. So when you enter the ring, you better start praying, cause this year is up. Uh, v2 quad ground me different, v2 quad ground me different. They smile in your face, and then the next day they switch, start acting different. v2 quad ground me different, v2 quad ground me different. They won't catch
such a case Got more in the way here, my lawyer, he'll handle you different Yeah, I'm the sauce of the sauce Chili got fire, I'm spicy, of course Yeah, ride this bitch like a horse To all of my haters, I show no remorse And you see it is what it is, me up too quick Yeah, do it for the kids, yeah Story like on the land, ain't showing no signs of making me wealthy Stop, I drop the merch, they copy Every week is one or two weeks so I'ma just continue to be me regardless I know they're really looking up for me Badu si trip, badu wanna die this trip. 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 Badu wanna
Zai ali chama tin picha bado wanna die this trip um. Mini slum fella sell a bill a hell a kenzi lishi wa hiki kizazi chama fuata nyayo ya wahenga wapendwa kitukuzwe hii ni kazi ya dadan twende mapema mpande ngazi ali shuka mapema kazi na chama siju ya kusema lakini na trip kuja na kavi si twende kwa sis story na panga si bongi kwa streets kila na fanya si easy to beat ni aje na ito ibangi ni sweet si lali for fuku si lali wana mipado si trip wana nyipado mnali zae ali chama tupi bado wana die this trip Uh, thank you again for coming, for attending this masterclass. Um, I feel like I, des- I need more years of experience to do even a better one, but I appreciate my five to six, ev- see, five to six years of experience being here. Uh, the title of this class is actually How to Be a Badass <laughs> Female DJ. So I hope I've taught you something. And just do what feels right. Do you. Practice, practice, practice. Talent is not enough. Skill. And just have fun with it. So I was Shishi and thank you for coming for my class. <laughs>